Good morning and welcome to Friday with the Rev. I'm Greg Johnson. I'm the president and CEO of GJP International, Greg Johnson Partnerships. And here in New York, I have the great privilege of being the chief advisor to the CEO of Emblem Health for family caregiving. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that I did. It was different. Yes, it was different. Uh, and that's reality. And that's a reality that we're going to be talking about this morning. We're going to talk a bit about family caregiving and the holidays. But once again, before we get to that part of our program, we want to take a time to focus on the pandemics. Yes, I say plurally, the pandemics, the pandemic of COVID-19 and the pandemic of systemic racism that we are seeing. And let's look at ways to positively deal with both. Yes, COVID has had a great surge and people are responding intelligently. People are using masks. People are social distancing. People are being considerate of where they travel and what they do. And it's not been easy because it's been a long time. And yet I must say, I get very impressed about many wonderful things that are happening. This past week, and we're going to continue our tradition of the litany for all of the frontline persons. We as a nation and frankly the world have been blessed to be cared for by a lot of wonderful, wonderful people whose work often is just assumed. It's not the big paying jobs. It's not the, the stars. It's the people who are doing the daily tasks that are let, let us live. And so during, during this holiday season, I hope you'll remember these people with a small gift, perhaps a little tip. They have a family too, and they risk their lives for us. Now this past week on Facebook, I found something that I really liked. It was written by healthcare workers to the general population. And I think it's a very important statement for us to read and to pass on to others in your conversations. Uh, it's on my Facebook page. Um, I think it's a very important thing to consider. And it's written by a doctor, Kaling uh, Wangan. I think I may have said that correctly. Dr. B. Kaling uh, Wangan, yes. We, the healthcare workers, are not your frontliners any longer. We are your last line of defense. You, my fellow persons, are the frontliners now. The war has shifted to the community and it is up to you. This cannot be won in the confines of the hospital. A powerful statement of truth. And now I invite you, whatever your tradition may be, to join me as we together pray for all those who are leading the charge in the COVID-19 response. Let us just sit back, put aside all the to-do lists and the concerns for today. Let's take a few deep breaths and reconnect with the divine love in which each of us was born. Holy God, in these moments of extreme concern, grant us wisdom, peace, and hope. When all around us we see sickness and fear, strengthen us with courage and resolve. For us and our loved ones, defend us and keep us free from harm. 
on all who are stressed, anxious, fearful, even panicked. Pour out a healing and calming balm. For those who fall sick with the coronavirus, restore them to health and wholeness. Among the doctors, nurses, hospital personnel, nursing home staff, and others who are on the front lines of this pandemic, provide their needs, shield them from infection, and lift their weariness. For those who have lost their jobs and income, meet their needs and replenish all they have lost. For paramedics, correction officers, police, firefighters, and others who also serve on the pandemic's front lines, surround them with your care and give them safety and security. For truck drivers, grocery store clerks, food service workers, pharmacy and delivery personnel, and all who staff the supply chains on which we all rely. Bless them with health, hope, and safe return to their own loved ones. To researchers and manufacturers and public decision makers, grant life-saving speed and initiative that through their efforts, life-saving preventions and remedies will be developed and employed, improving people's health now and in the future. And Lord, when these fiery trials have ceased, renew your church and this world in ways only you could understand. In you, O oh Lord, we place our trust. For you, O oh Lord, we wait in hope. Thanks be to God. And we pray in all the holy names of God. Amen. I invite you this week, as you deal with various persons who have been extremely, extremely helpful, say thank you. And that has always been my words for family caregivers. Family caregivers, you're the golden rule livers. That's exciting. You're doing unto others as one day you pray and know others will do to you. The holidays can be a very, very stressful time beyond all of the preparations and so forth. It can be a time of memories. It can be a time of loss, of reliving loss. And wherever you may be in the spectrum, and you may be in many different places at once, because that's often the case. This holiday season, I will be remembering mother in a very special way. It will be the first Christmas for her in heaven. And the firsts are always difficult. But she's returned to the also life from which she came. Now, why do I talk of that? Because Within the Christian church, and I know we have people of many, many different faiths and religions, and some who are fighting and, and confused about faith and religion and spirituality. That's fine. That's what this program was about. But each and every one of us was born in love. No matter what the circumstances may be, no, what, no matter what the messages you may have gotten before, God wanted you here. And you are not a mistake. You are the blessed child, as am I, of love. And every faith tradition talks of love. That's one of the great gifts of the holiday time. We have Christmas, we have Hanukkah, we have Kwanzaa. And in each faith tradition, it is about light and about love, expressed in different ways. But our religions point us 
to truth. Each is a perfectly wonderful path, and we see more and more of the same. We were born in love, and that love never leaves us. We may go off here, we may go off there, we may be confused. That's what it is about down here, our spiritual work. But ultimately, we return to that love. Now, one of the gifts of each of the religions that I've just mentioned, and many others, is that throughout the year, the calendar year, there are times of reflection. One of those coming for the Christians begins on Sunday. Sunday is actually the Christian New Year this year. It's four Sundays before Christmas. And it's Advent, the time of expectation, the time to spend preparing for love to come down at Christmas. And so it's a wonderful time for us. And whether you are of the Christian faith or of another faith, or if you secularly are preparing, everyone is preparing. That's what is happening at this time. Yes, it's Black Friday. People are preparing. I invite you during this time to spend some time re-looking at your connection to the divine within your life, to that love from which we came and to which we will return, whatever nouns go, you, you like to use. We are here, and caregivers, you are living in that love and in that service. Now, earlier in our broadcast, I spoke of the two, two pandemics. First, we talked about COVID-19, but a second has been the systemic racism. Racism that most of us didn't even understand. Racism that's been understood by many others, but not by us. This week, Father Richard Rohr, in his writings, which I so love and share with you so often, talks about the kingdom of God. And I like that phrase because presently, and I'm not mixing up church and state, they're very much separate and need to be, but we are living in a time where there is a new transition happening within the American government. And here are a few of his thoughts shared with us. And I really found them very exciting. And I want you to think about these two. He suggests, open your minds and hearts like children to see things freshly in a new way and enter this new way of living. Don't get revenge when wronged, but seek reconciliation. Don't repay violence with violence, but seek creative and transforming nonviolent alternatives. Don't focus on external conformity to moral codes, but on internal transformation in love. Don't love insiders and hate or fear outsiders, but welcome outsiders into a new us, a new we, a new humanity that celebrates diversity in the context of love for all justice for all, and mutual respect for all. Don't have anxiety about money or security or pleasure at the center of your life, 
but trust yourself to the care of God, to the divine, to God as you understand that word today. Don't live for wealth, but for the living God who loves all people, including your enemies. Don't hate your enemies or competitors, but love them and do to them not as they have done to you, and not before they do to you, but as you wish they would do to you. Caregivers, I hear you there. The phrase kingdom of God on Jesus' lips means almost the opposite of what Americans like me might assume living in the richest, most powerful nation on earth does mean. To a citizen of Western civilization, again like me, kingdom language suggests order, stability, government, policy, domination, control, maybe even vengeance on rebels and threats of banishment for the uncooperative. But in the lips of the divine, those words describe Caesar's kingdom. God's kingdom turns all of those associations upside down. Order becomes opportunity. Stability melts into movement and change. Status quo government gives way to a revolution of community and neighborliness. Policy bows to love. Domination descends to service and sacrifice. Control morphs into influence and inspiration and vengeance and threats are transformed into forgiveness and blessings. Thank you, Father Rohr and Brian McLaren from the Center of Action and Contemplation. Those are very, very powerful words. And I hope you'll read them again. They're posted again on my Facebook page. And speaking of that, I left that out earlier. Just in case you would like, and I love it when you do, I can be reached by email at gregjohnson at gjp dash, don't forget the dash, dash international.com. gregjohnson at gjp dash international.com. All of these programs, and by the way, this is the 98th Friday with the Rev, and I thank each of you for making it such an ongoing event. I thank you for your comments, for your prayers, and for your support with ideas and support with telling me stories that are happening in your life and in your caregiving journey. Now, all of them are um, archived on our YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel is Family Caregiving with the Rev. So please feel free to look at it, use it, listen to it again, and share it with those with whom you are caring. And if you are a professional caregiver who is working with other caregivers, share that as well. It may be a resource that will help them to find something for which they are indeed looking. So I urge you to use each and every one of those. And I also share with you the enormous resources that Emblem Health has made available. If you simply Google, it's the easiest way to find it. Emblem Health, one word, Emblem Health, Care for the Family Caregiver. It will take you directly to the site, and there are many, many items there. And one of the items that is there, and it's what I want to conclude talking about this morning, because it's directly related to the holidays and family caregiving. 
the holidays are a time where the whole family tends to come together, whether we're not doing it physically this year, but we are doing it through various social media sites and platforms, Zoom and various other things. So it becomes a time of conversation and sharing. It's also a wonderful time if you are the primary caregiver and are feeling very much overwhelmed but not knowing how to approach brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, others who could be of help, but just don't seem to get it or to be stepping up to the platform. Well, family caregiver, it's up to you to help them understand. It's perfectly okay to say, I need your help. I'm overwhelmed. I found help, and here's what I would pray that you do. This is a booklet that has helped thousands, I'm pleased to say, of family caregivers. Care for the family caregiver, a place to start. And it can be found on that Emblem Health website. You will see it there with links to the English, the Spanish, and the Chinese version. So please, Emblem Health Care for the Family Caregiver, Google that, go to the site, scroll down, and you will see resources. And there will be links to each and every one of these. Now, why do I suggest that? If we say to loved ones, can't you help me more? Or we begin to totally explode, as it were, from our frustration, we're not going to get anywhere. And we're probably going to have more disharmony than harmony. Here's what I've suggested to many, many people. You are the primary caregiver, and because of this program, you know about this booklet. Take a look at it yourself so that you speak from the first person. And then take the link and share it with your brothers, your sisters, with others whom you feel could be helpful. And then I suggest you just write a simple email with that link saying, I'm so grateful I found this book from Emblem Health and it has been really an eye opener and has helped me to understand family caregiving the process that we are involved in with mother, with dad, with grandma, with grandpa, with whomever it might be. I'd really appreciate it if you would take a look at this book as well. And then let's talk about it together. Perhaps we can have a Zoom call. I need your help. I know I'm the primary caregiver, and I do accept that role. But I need you to walk with me too. And here are some things that may help all of us to communicate and perhaps find things that you can do to help me so that I can have more time to spend with our loved one. So again, I urge you. And also, while you're looking for resources, another item to share because it's very, it's, it's an excellent book on many, many levels, but it's particularly good at finding people who might be able to join your circle of care. Because we, it takes a village, there's no question. We need many people with many different skills. You've heard me talk last week about children caregivers as being wonderful resources for doing all of the computer necessary functions. Well, much of that is outlined in detail by the brilliant, brilliant Sheila Warnock, who wrote what we often refer to as the Bible on family caregiving, share the care. It shows how to create, share the care groups. And there are many, many wonderful forms in here that you as a family can download and use together. Because with technology, you can all keep in touch without having to start the conversation over each time. There are charts that you can be each saying, I can do this, I can do that. I'm available here, I'm available there. 
and it really and truly makes the caregiving journey a much greater experience. And it also can bring unity because down deep, sometimes it seems very deep, but people do want to help. Often fear, oh, that wonderful old word fear comes in and they forget everything and run and forget that they can face everything and rise, just like you family caregivers have been doing. So during this time, as we prepare for the Christmas holiday, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, as we prepare for love coming down at Christmas, as we renew and reconnect with the union of love. For me, it's not so much about a debt to be paid as a union to be made. We were created in love. That love surrounds us all the time. It is within us and around us. It's there to support us. We are not alone. And that is the great message of love coming down at Christmas. Now, I thank you for being with me this morning. I hope that these thoughts have been helpful to you. And I look forward to seeing you again next week, Friday, with the Rev. And as we leave, I'm going to share with you a prayer that so many of you have written to me loving. It is that wonderful prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, a prayer of enormous love. So as we conclude, take a deep breath, a breath of love, a breath that reignites the Ruach Elohim, the breath of God within each and every one of us. And we pray, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, the truth. Where there is doubt, the faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Do join me during the week. On Monday, we have Peace Be Still, a very short time of prayer based upon the book by the same name. On Thursday, Hymns by Request. And Friday is Friday with the Rev. Until then, onward with love and caring. Namaste. God bless.